So hello and welcome to a discussion of a new PLOS collection, the collection on uh, global burden of norovirus and prospects for a vaccine development, which is published at the end of April in 2016. So the articles for the collection are available from PLOS One, PLOS Pathogens and PLOS Medicine. And you can find uh, all of the articles if you'd like to read them at collections.plos.org forward slash norovirus. So my name is Paul Simpson. I'm the uh, deputy editor of PLOS Medicine. And I'm uh, lucky enough to be joined by three of the uh, lead authors from the collection. So that's Ben Lockman, uh, Carl Kirkwood, and Mirren uh, Itereza Gomera. So guys, would you like to introduce yourselves? Hey, thanks, Paul. I'm Ben Lopman. I'm an epidemiologist at the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, uh, in Atlanta. And I'm one of the lead authors of this collection on the global burden of norovirus and, and prospects for vaccine development. So my name's Carl Kirkwood, and I'm a Senior Research Officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And uh, the, the role of the foundation was to provide support and funding for for this um, excellent initiative of looking at norovirus and the, the disease burden and vaccine development. Hi, uh, my name is Miriam Turiza Gomara and uh, I am a virologist. I'm based at the University of Liverpool in the UK and I was uh, one of the lead authors of uh, one of the papers in this collection and participated actively in the meeting as well. Brilliant. Thanks guys. So I thought it would be useful to, to start by just describing what norovirus is for the previous from the perspective of somebody who is unfortunate to have norovirus. Ben, would you like to, to tell us? Sure. So norovirus is a virus that causes gastroenteritis. So that is diarrhea and vomiting illness. And for someone who's unfortunate enough to get norovirus infection, the vomiting, the diarrheal symptoms can lead to dehydration. Uh, and sometimes severe disease can result from that. So norovirus is very common. It's the most common cause of gastroenteritis, uh, diarrheal disease across the age spectrum. And it's also important in a number of, kind of key areas. It's very common in young children. Uh, it's, a, it's the most common cause of foodborne disease in the U.S. And it's, uh, we're learning increasingly that it's a major burden in children in, in low-income countries as well. Uh, from a virological perspective, it's a, a single-stranded RNA virus. And that has implications for public health. That means these viruses are very diverse. And they're also rapidly evolving. So that presents some real challenges that we'll probably talk about later in terms of, of immunity and, and vaccine developments. And so for in terms of treatment, what, what can you do for somebody who has norovirus? Right. So the, the primary um, issue with norovirus, with the gastroenteritis, is, is dehydration that results. So the primary treatment is supportive. It's basically rehydration. Typically, that's oral rehydration. Um, but in more severe cases, when hospitalization occurs, you can also have intravenous uh, rehydration therapy. There's no specific treatments available right now for, for norovirus. Mm -hmm. OK. And so it's, it's, it's a relatively short duration for most people. And, and most people will survive. But it can be life threatening. Is that right? Right. So in an otherwise healthy adult, norovirus gastroenteritis lasts for uh, around 48 hours. Um, but that may not be the case in, in more vulnerable populations like young children. They can have more severe disease. The elderly can have more severe disease, get severely dehydrated. Uh, and immunocompromised as well. This is a, a potentially an important group who, when they get infected, can have, have really prolonged illness, can shed virus for weeks or even months. Mm -hmm. And I think you've already said this, but geographically, it's, it's ubiquitous. Right. So, you know, norovirus is, is ubiquitous, really. It's, uh, we find it pretty much everywhere we look. Uh, and that includes in, from lowest to highest income countries. And, and that's uh, important. It tells us that improvements in things like water, sanitation, and hygiene, which clearly are important for controlling diarrheal disease in general, will not be completely effective stopping transmission of a virus that's disinfectious. So we find it in low-income countries and high-income countries, regardless of the kind of level of development of sanitation systems. So I'm interested in the, um, 
you know, the genesis of the collection and, you know, why now, why do a, a collection of research on norovirus? Is there something about where the field is at now that, that really kind of calls for a collection on norovirus? What do you think, Carl? So, well, I think that the field is moving forward significantly in the last, I guess, five to ten years. We, we now know a lot more about the virus, the epidemiology, the disease burden of norovirus, and understanding the disease burden and we have vaccines that are starting to be developed are in phase three clinical trials so the the field is really at the stage where we need to come to grips with uh, moving the, the vaccine development understanding how to implement it and what are the markets we need to drive to introduce a vaccine so all of these areas have, have converged I guess we're bringing biology vaccine development and disease burden together to move our understanding forward and, and that was really the genesis I think for the, the meeting and, and the publications. Great, thanks. So in the, in the overview paper for the collection I think you identify six critical gaps and I, and I think that these can be drawn along the three lines roughly so I think that that is um, there's uh, challenges in uh, measuring the burden of uh, noroviruses. Uh, there's a challenge in um, uh, biological challenges in vaccine development and then there's challenges in implementation. So I wonder if we could tackle each of those three. So, so Ben, uh, my understanding is that there is a relatively straightforward test for norovirus but it seems that there might be a little bit of controversy in, in um, calculating disease burden. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, I, I would first say that uh, I think you know we'd, we'd all agree. Epidemiologists would certainly one of the our our kind of main objectives is to quantify the disease burden, and one the reason for that is to help prioritization. Right. So there's you know in a world of limited resources, it's clearly important that we know how big of a problem that we're we're dealing with and how much uh, efforts put into kind of addressing it. And so it's. You know, it's been a big effort to quantify the, the burden of norovirus, and a, a lot of the challenges have stemmed from uh, from challenges in developing uh, sensitive and specific diagnostics. We only, I mean, we only recently have um, real-time PCR, these molecular assays, which are kind of the standard diagnostics now, and they are um, they are highly sensitive, but they're really restricted still to research and public health labs. They're not in routine clinical use. So that has a number of kind of implications for estimating disease burden. You can't just go into hospital records, for example, go into clinic records to see how many people had norovirus because there's very little testing going on in the clinic. Um, another issue which is that these these diagnostics are actually highly sensitive. They can detect really low levels of virus in, in samples and that's great as far as a sensitive diagnostic goes. But what we find now is that when you look in healthy kids, especially in, in the lower income countries, you find a lot of norovirus in kids with diarrhea, but you find a fair amount in kids without diarrhea too. Um, we were involved in a big systematic review uh, a few years ago and found find norovirus in about 20% of, of sick kids and about 8% of, of otherwise healthy children. So it, you have this question of when is the virus actually causing disease? It seems really ubiquitous, and so with these very sensitive diagnostics, you have this question of, you know, how calm, how when when you find norovirus, what does it mean clinically? Okay, and then from the um, the, the the next issue that uh, that was identified in the overview piece was um, really the biological challenges in in developing vaccines. And Mirren, could you tell me a little bit about? Where we are with vaccines, and and uh, you know what are the challenges, the hurdles that need to be overcome? Well, I suppose that that one of the biggest challenges to development of vaccine has been the same uh, challenge that, that has hampered uh, the study of norovirus, which, which is that they cannot be grown in the laboratory, so that limits a great deal uh, the development of assays, the understanding the, the biology, and also the development of vaccines. Um, historically, most of the enteric infections uh, have been tackled with uh, life attenuated vaccines. Of course, this is not possible for norovirus. However, 
there is now a, a candidate vaccine which is which doesn't replicate, it's not a virus in itself, it's a virus-like particle. It looks identical to the virus, but it doesn't have a genome, and therefore it will not grow and it will not multiply. It has been used in trials, in adult uh, volunteer trials, and it does produce good immune responses. So it's showing some promise. However, there are various challenges. Of course, the trials to date, although promising they have all exclusively done in healthy adults and all healthy adults will have been exposed to norovirus previously to norovirus infection therefore they're not seeing these uh, virus like particles for the first time they are seeing um, they are seeing a repeat of, of the infection and therefore they, their in their immune memory is being um, sort of uh, challenged and they mount a good immune response. So what we don't know is if we want to use these vaccines in children, uh, given that children are the ones that, that have the highest burden of disease, we don't know if as a first contact with the virus this will produce the right type of immune response. Uh, because we want the immune response to be um, happening in the gut where the infection occurs. These viruses are limited exclusively to replication in the gut nowhere else. Therefore, you want the immune response to be there. We don't know how successful those vaccines will be. There have been challenges. That, that you can use adjuvants uh, or molecules that will um, encourage uh, better immune responses and can encourage immune responses that are directed to the gut as well or mucosally. However, some of those adjuvants are, cannot be used in children or are not licensed for use in children. So that has been one of the challenges faced by the current vaccine, which has had to change the formulation exclusively. And finally, another group uh, which uh, will benefit tremendously from the vaccine is the elderly, where uh, disease severity can be higher and where mortality uh, uh, rates can be higher due to norovirus infection. Again, given that uh, the elderly will have uh, weakened or waning immune uh, systems, uh, we don't know how well they will perform. So we need to understand better how this vaccine may perform in different age groups uh, which may be targeted by vaccination. And the other biological challenge is that, as Ben alluded earlier, uh, they are very diverse group of viruses. And this diversity ge generates a random because they are RNA viruses, they're constantly mutating and they're changing uh, the surface and uh, a bit like influenza, where the virus changes from one system to the other and vaccines are adapted, there might be uh, a possibility for norovirus. It is possible or it might be likely that vaccines may need to be adapted from time to time. We don't know the frequency. We don't know if it will be necessary. We know immune responses are cross-reactive as well as type-specific, but we have still very poor understanding of immune correlates of protection. Great. So I think it would be fair to say that we've got some promising candidates, but there's still a lot of research that's needed before any of them will be uh, will be able to implement any of them. Mm -hmm. I think that brings me on to to the kind of final of those uh, that those set set of uh, critical knowledge gaps, which is if we do develop a, a vaccine that um, could work, is actually the challenges of implementation. And Carl, I wonder if you could uh, describe some of those challenges for us. For, for vaccines to be introduced into the, the marketplace, essentially you, you first need to identify your target populations. And for norovirus, there's three target populations. There's obviously children, there's adults, and there's, there's also military. And when you develop a vaccine, you have to introduce a cost structure into your vaccine development. And this has huge implications on how available and how how much utility those vaccines will have depending on the price. Um, the, other, the other major issue in terms of vaccine development is availability. How much the vaccine is going to be made by a vaccine manufacturer and where they would see that vaccine being made available to which populations. So these are all critical issues in terms of developing a vaccine, but also getting it rolled out into a, into the target populations. Brilliant. Thanks, Carl. 
So the collection launches um, at the end of April, and then I wonder what next for, for research in, in these areas. So I wonder if I could challenge each of you to, to tell me what's the most important thing you think next. Ben, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Paul. Um, I think we've still got a tremendous amount to learn about noroviruses before we can consider them to be controlled or even controllable. Um, you know, we th I think we're just starting to get good data on the, the burden of disease. I mean, in, in the U.S., we've got some good focus studies, and we now know that norovirus is the number one cause of severe gastroenteritis in kids, and that's because of the success of the rotavirus vaccine program in controlling that disease, which used to be the number one cause of diarrheal disease in that age group. But really, the data from middle and lower income countries where the disease burden is undoubtedly higher, we have really very scant data. So I think there's, there's a clear need for well-conducted, additional well-conducted uh, studies in, in those populations. In kids, but also across the age range, and also understanding how norovirus is really transmitted within communities. Because if we do have a vaccine, or really any uh, intervention, it's part of the uh, success of an intervention against, against norovirus will be about reducing transmission, right? So how is norovirus transmitted exactly? How, what are the importance of different groups like children or even specific groups like healthcare workers, food handlers? How, how important are they in the transmission process in the population? So really understanding transmission, I think, will be important to developing the best intervention programs, whether those are vaccines or more traditional infection control. Carl, what do you think are the next steps from the point of view of the Gates Foundation? So uh, I guess from the Gates Foundation, norovirus is on our le learning agenda. So while it's not a top priority where rotavirus and Shigella and, and the, the major causes of childhood illness sit, norovirus is sort of the second rung of importance for, for our perspective. But we, we still, as Ben alluded to, need to understand disease burden and also vaccine development and de and developing a cost-effective strategy to introduce vaccines. So moving forward, understanding the models for cost-effectiveness and implementation are crucial to roll out any vaccine that, that will become available. I think on a biology point of view, understanding how the virus replicates, the fact that we can now grow the virus, I think, is, is opening up huge fields which moving forward will we'll address a lot of questions in basic biology of the virus, but also understanding and implementing how to get a better vaccine, which hopefully we will be moving forward with. So, um, Mirren, from, from the sort of biological challenges of in vaccine development, what do you think are the next important uh, issues that need to be resolved? In terms of specifically of vaccine development, I think uh, we are better, although we have uh, some uh, promising results on correlates of protection, we need to understand better the correlates of protection. We also need to um, understand whether non-replicative vaccines uh, will work as priming vaccines, uh, particularly thinking of vaccination in children. And we also need to get a better understanding of the role of the virus diversity on immunity and uh, whether there is sufficient cross-reactivity elicited by uh, the most common genotype, like G24, uh, that will protect against the majority of infections. Uh, and there are parallels. I mean, I mentioned earlier influenza, for example, you need to reformulate every year. Uh, when we started uh, several years ago with rotavirus vaccinations, we thought we, that might have been the, the case and that we would need several strains to be included in the vaccines. Now, since we have started using the vaccines in anger uh, for the last few years, we have realized that there is a great degree of cross-protection and even monovalent vaccines um, are being very efficacious. So there are a lot of unknowns as well with, uh, in respect to, to cross-protection. And so better understanding of the biology and immunity will help uh, drive better vaccines. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So thanks very much, guys, for spending a bit of time with us. I think uh, you've given us a good taste of what's in the collection. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it published at the end of April and then looking forward to those future developments.
post uh, post collection. So if, if anybody would like to see the um, the articles in the in the collection, they're available at collections.plus.org forward slash norovirus. Thanks very much. <laughs>